If I was you and I had a camera right now, where I would go is a little city called Bonham. It's Compton, but it's where the Bloods is at because they put a B in front of everything, so it's Bonham. And the reason why I would go there is because they are the number one in the rap world right now. From Compton, I could've easily came out and said, I did this, I did that. I killed the whole bunch of but just giving off fact where I'm, where I'm from. That ain't me, I'd rather talk about my reality. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather talk yeah. about something a little bit more deeper than that. The reasons and the problem and the solutions behind it. Compton's past is widely recognized, and it acquired a tough reputation over time thanks to the influence of N.W.A., known for tracks like Boys in the Hood and the film Straight Outta Compton. People have a general sense of what happens in Compton, but the specifics of how it all unfolds may not be as clear. That's precisely what we'll delve into in this video. In fact, we will delve deeper into a vicious gang war that is taking place between representatives of Bompton and 400. We will check out some of Compton's most significant events and provide an in-depth look at the rapper YG's involvement in this complex and challenging environment. We begin this video with a brief introduction to the Pyrus. While many are familiar with this name, not everyone knows its origin. It all began around 1970 on East Peru Street in Compton, a gathering spot for teenagers and street hustlers looking to make a living. It's here that they banded together, adopting the name Pyrus in homage to the street. They eventually joined the Blood Alliance, evolving into a larger operation. However, their unity didn't last, as internal affairs divided them into separate sections. This leads us to the Treetop Pyrus, also known as TTP. They are situated south of Rosecrans Avenue, between Acacia and Iran B Streets. There are multiple treetop sets, but the most renowned is the 400 block of Spruce Street, which happens to be the hometown of Compton's famous rapper, YG. When YG references 400, he's referring to this area, but it's worth noting that treetop hasn't been well-liked for around five decades, facing conflicts with many, including another set of Pyrus. Now there is another faction of the Pyrus known as the Fruit Town Pyrus, or FTP, located just north of TTP on the other side of Rosecrans Avenue. The streets in Fruit Town are aptly named after fruits like Plum Street, Cherry Street, and Peach Street. Additionally, East Peru Street, where the Pyrus originated, can be found here. The Treetop and Fruit Town rivalry is intense, and it has tragically claimed numerous lives over the years. Interestingly, Treetop's rivalry extends beyond Fruit Town. Treetop's arch rival in Compton is a section known as T-Flats, located across the train tracks from Treetop. T-Flats stands for Tortilla Flats. But its name has nothing to do with the Mexican cuisine. It's derived from a romantic comedy novel. While the name may sound amusing, the reality is far from it, as you'll see later. Compton may look picturesque with its palm trees and pleasant weather, but its appearance can be deceptive. The city's level of danger varies from year to year, a common theme in California. In some years, homicide rates are low, only to suddenly spike. For instance, in 2005, Compton's homicide rate reached a staggering 67 per 100,000 residents, far exceeding the California average. A decade later, in 2015, the rate dropped to just 13 per 100,000, similar to other cities like Las Vegas and Sacramento. This was a significant improvement for Compton, but the progress was short-lived. In 2021, Compton faced one of its worst years on record, with a surge in violent crime. In Compton, there's one rule you never break. Don't venture into rival territory no matter the reason. The consequences can be fatal. On April 16, 2009, three teenagers from Treetop decided to visit a girl named Keisha after school. There was a catch. She lived in T-Flats territory. Despite the risk, the boys chose to go anyway. They managed to reach Keisha's house safely, believing everything was okay. However, when it was time to leave, they decided to head down Elm Street to cross the tracks back into Treetop territory. Here's where things took a fateful turn. A Honda began to tail them discreetly. One of the teens noticed the car and grew suspicious. The driver, a 24-year-old named Hammer, pulled up behind them, shouting flats and making a gang sign with his hands. One of the teens turned to his friends and said, Run, just run as fast as you can and do not look back. They sprinted away and the Honda screeched and accelerated. It was at this point that one of the teens, Tyler Jenkins, turned around and confronted the driver. He struck him, causing the car to crash into a tree. Eder Sosa Vicencio, a 23-year-old Latino, was shot in the head while he was driving his car in the 700 block of North Acacia Avenue in Compton, according to the Los Angeles County Coroner's Office. Eder Sosa did not survive the headshot soon after the teens were discovered, and this is when things took a different course. 
One of the teens who had fled decided to tell the police the entire story, including where they could find the weapon Tyler Jenkins had used. Since Tyler was under 18 at the time, he is referred to as LH instead of his full name. This is when the situation became intriguing. The men in the Honda also testified. They claimed they were not following the teens and did not threaten them. LH's account didn't align with theirs, raising suspicions among the investigators. To find evidence linking the men in the Honda to T-flats, they uncovered graffiti with the words hammer and a highly offensive term NK. Additionally, a neighbor testified that one of the men in the Honda had shouted derogatory words about being in the neighborhood. Despite this evidence of hatred and affiliations, it wasn't sufficient to help Tyler Jenkins. He ultimately received a 31-year sentence. The key factor leading to his conviction was the testimony and evidence provided by LH. Without these, Tyler Jenkins might never have faced arrest. Following this incident, the rivalry between Treetop and T-Flats escalated to new heights. Tensions between the two groups had reached a point where any encounter could lead to immediate confrontation. On December 8, 2011, a significant event unfolded. Members of T-Flats, Dopey and his friend Jason Ayala, were standing in front of the apartments on Elm Street. Two treetop individuals approached them and inquired, Are you Dopey from TF? Before Dopey could respond, a man named Marcus White pulled out a weapon and, in an instant, Dopey was struck. Both sides quickly dispersed. The treetops attempted to pursue them, but eventually gave up. Jason Ayala, returning to the scene, decided to wait for the police. When the officers arrived, he provided a detailed account of the incident, including the identities of those involved. He urged the police to look for a tall black man in a white shirt heading towards the nearby strip mall. The police pursued this lead, eventually locating the individual. He had climbed onto a rooftop in an attempt to hide. When apprehended, he began sharing his version of the story, which differed from Jason's account. According to Marcus White, men from T-Flats had stopped them as they were simply walking down the street. He claimed that his friend, Dimitri Gales, was the one responsible for the incident. Consequently, the police proceeded to apprehend Dimitri and bring him in for questioning. The critical question remained, would Dimitri cooperate as well? Dimitri Gales, too, cooperated with the authorities, although his version of the story had a twist. At the time, Dimitri wasn't aware that his friend had also provided information. In his statement, Dimitri maintained that he hadn't witnessed Marcus White's actions. You might be wondering how this could be considered snitching when he didn't incriminate his friend. However, the rules in these neighborhoods are stringent, and any statements made, regardless of their nature, are against the code. All the commotion and conflicting accounts didn't favor Marcus White. He received a 20-year sentence, and his friend Dimitri Gales, whom he had unwittingly implicated, also got 18 years. Both found themselves in prison with their share of incriminating records. Currently, Dimitri Gale serves his time in Los Angeles County Prison, while Marcus White is incarcerated at Ironwood State Prison. The territorial nature of Compton is evident, with the need to always be aware of your surroundings, as one wrong turn can be perilous. Treetop Pyrus, including YG, understand this reality all too well. YG has spent his entire life in this environment and asserts that he dedicated his life to Treetop. He's well acquainted with opposition and navigating treacherous situations. Now let's move on to the events of June 6, 2015. YG was at the recording studio, surrounded by his friends while laying down some tracks. He stepped outside and noticed a suspicious black car pulling into the studio gate. Unfamiliar faces emerged from the car, and YG decided to confront them. These individuals claimed to live there, but YG had a gut feeling that something wasn't right. He headed back into the studio, and that's when his friend ventured outside. When the unknown men brandished weapons at YG's friend, an argument quickly escalated. YG rushed outside to assess the situation, but suddenly the men opened fire. YG was hit three times in the hip. I got pop. Yeah. Really don't know who popped me. Yeah. I'm paranoid. I be saying some wild shit. My people's like, you need to go talk to somebody. As soon as we hit outside, they start boom, 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 sparking. I fall back in the crib. I'm shot. You feel me? I'm over there. I'm, I'm hit. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm, I'm, this nigga shot me. His friend managed to carry him to a car and race to the hospital. Unfortunately, the driver lost control, colliding with a median and hitting a parked car. YG, unconscious in the back seat of a wrecked car, was extremely fortunate that an ambulance arrived in time. He somehow got released on the very same day. His survival was a stroke of luck, particularly considering the location of his wounds. If they had been hollow point bullets, the outcome could have been much more dire. The following day, YG returned to the studio, dedicating himself to his work for the next year, consistently releasing hit songs and dropping his second studio album titled Still Crazy. But in Compton, troubles are hard to avoid, especially when you're a famous figure like YG and are associated with the treetops. 
On May 16, 2016, another incident unfolded. Compton rapper AD, known for his music and appearances on platforms like the No Jumper podcast, had organized a large video shoot in Compton. All seemed to be going smoothly until things took a turn for the worse. A car pulled up, and suddenly shots were fired at the video shoot. Fortunately, everyone emerged unharmed. This event didn't appear to rattle AD, who later shared his experience in an interview with DJ Vlad. According to him, this was just a busy Tuesday in Compton. It's an average day in Compton, man. It's an average day in Compton. And you know, I'll just say it was God. God was with everybody that day. Let's now delve into the events involving their rivals from Fruit Town. In the realm of Compton's intricate history, the Fruit Town Pirates emerge as a prominent African American street gang that first took root in the early 1970s, establishing themselves as one of the venerable Peru sets in the Compton landscape. Despite their geographical designation as the East Side, a notable segment of their domain, situated to the west of Wilmington and encompassing Gonzales Park, falls within the confines of Compton's West Side. One notable figure who has emerged from the ranks of the FTPs is Compton Menace. His ascent to recognition began with the release of his inaugural mixtape, Menace 2 Society Voller 1 Inch in 2010. He further etched his name into the annals of hip-hop culture by portraying a member of the Crenshaw Mafia gang in the 2015 cinematic portrayal of N.W.A., straight out of Compton. In a gripping scene, he embodied a character who halted a school bus to confront Crip members, a moment forever etched in the late 1980s history of Ice Cube's journey. Fruit Town gained notoriety in the media around 2013 when Chris Brown began to claim affiliation with Fruit Town Peru. Yeah, Blood, a whole lot of gangsters. I need some bookies on there. <laughs> hey. They got the Bockley bit bookies. <laughs> we up in me? here, though. Yeah, that way. Yeah, Fruit Town, yeah. Athens, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Avenue Pyro, all that. Yeah, we got the big show. Yeah. 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 Another one. Look at fat ass, the yeah, dust. <laughs> the dust to try to act like he don't want to be Hey, what's sad? Oh, oh, you, oh, you record me, oh. Yeah. It's the one and only that can't clone me, baby. Yeah. And this fella. Yeah, that way, baby. Hey, look, oh, we know. We know who you are, what's bro. What's up, baby? Yeah, my Dre from the Richmond, the V8. Real gangster. In 2017, Soldier Boy also claimed that he's from Bompton and that Fruit Town is his neighborhood. He even walked around Fruit Town, but this wasn't received well in Los Angeles. You gotta check in anyway. Morgan. You gotta. How much you gonna knock my big homie out? I'm catching fades from my big homie Wack. You dig? And Big Soldier ain't gonna catch no fade because I'm worth too many M's. You dig? Hey, what's going on, man? Nah, young ain't hey, They say Soulja ain't from the hood. Hey, they say Soulja ain't from the hood. Fuck off me, though. Oh, Phil. Y'all yeah, know what the fuck going on, man. Fruit Town hey, we Pirates. We the real ones, too. Yeah. We the real ones. Who ain't from Fruits? <laughs> Who ain't from Fruit Town? Yeah, I'm walking through Bompton right now. I'm in my hood right now. <laughs> Chris Brown talking about <laughs> Chris Brown. <laughs> pull up in the hood right now. Catch your fade. Fuck. Hey, look. Fruits. Sawoo. Sawoo, 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 Holla, sawoo, the blood starts swarming. We out here right now. We out here right now. Real pyros. Real pyros. Talking about. Fuck a world. Soldier Boy challenge, do the petite challenge. 80,000 on my wrist in Bompton. <laughs> Bro, these man. Different out here. Hit that shit, blood. That Hit that shit, blood. We the real fruit. Power road. Right before we leave, we got to get 
Yeah. It made the streets appear diluted and turned into a bit of a mockery. Some Fruit Town members shared these sentiments as they felt that outsiders claiming their neighborhood and gang affiliation was disrespectful to those who had grown up in that challenging environment. The game, another rapper, retweeted YG's statement. Now, let's fast forward to June 28, 2019. Treetop rapper Slim 400 was returning from a show in a tinted car when he arrived at his family's house. However, waiting for him were individuals who opened fire, hitting him nine times. His friends rushed him inside the house to try and stabilize him and ensure he stayed conscious. Remarkably, he survived this ordeal, but it sent a clear message that Treetop was in a precarious position. Just five days later, things took a turn for the worse. On July 3rd, YG's black armored Escalade was being driven by his friend James Harris. YG claimed to be at a recording studio in Hollywood, and James had the car. While driving down the 400 block of Spruce Street, right in the neighborhood where YG grew up, a police car began following them, presumably to pull them over. But before the officer could even step out of his car, James Harris exited the vehicle and, without warning, opened fire on the police car. In the process, he struck a 65-year-old neighbor named Ricky Starks, who was visiting his brother in Compton and happened to be riding his bike to the corner store at that moment. It's a tragic tale of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. The bullets were flying in Compton last Wednesday night. This LA County Sheriff's patrol car involved in a pursuit riddled with rounds from an assault rifle. A sheriff's helicopter struck as well and caught in the crossfire, 65-year-old Ricky Starks. He went to get some cigarettes. Mary Starks is Ricky's mother. The 91-year-old says her second son was a loner who lived with her and worked later in life as a handyman, quiet but well-known throughout the neighborhood. His body was found after the late night shootout near his bicycle. That was his heart. That bike, he would ride around and go places uh, to uh, cut grass or whatever, but he'd always ride his bike. And the night of the deadly pursuit, one man was arrested, another escaped. They were in this black Cadillac Escalade. Investigators say it was armored with bullet-resistant glass. But even more interesting, its registered owner is this man, the popular rapper YG. He has denied being involved in the pursuit, and investigators still have not said whether the rounds that struck Starks came from the SUV or the deputies in pursuit. Starks' mom wants answers. I would love to get justice because he didn't bother nobody. He didn't, he didn't do nothing but laugh and talk with you and speak and go on about his business. However, the chaos didn't end there. James Harris went into what can only be described as GTA mode. Evading the police, he started firing at a police helicopter that had been dispatched to follow him all the way to Englewood. The helicopter's pilot claimed that Harris had hit the rotor, an unbelievable act. The helicopter pulled back, and hundreds of police cars soon swarmed Harris, eventually leading to his surrender. When the police ran the registration of the Escalade, they discovered it belonged to YG. As a result, they obtained a warrant to search YG's Hollywood home, but they found nothing tying YG to the chaotic incident. In the streets of Compton, we've explored a world marked by rivalry celebrity claims to neighborhoods, and a life where danger often lurks around the corner. The stories we've shared illustrate the harsh realities faced by those who grow up in these challenging environments. It's a life where affiliations are strong, boundaries are clear, and survival can be a daily battle. But even amidst the turmoil, there's a yearning for change and a brighter future. It's crucial to remember that these neighborhoods are not defined solely by their hardships. They're also home to countless individuals with dreams, ambitions, and the potential to break free from cycles of violence and adversity. The voices of those who've lived through these experiences call for unity and respect, reminding us that community strength can outweigh the allure of gang affiliations. As we look back on these events and challenges, we must consider the potential for transformation. The resilience of these communities is undeniable, and the hope for a safer, more inclusive future is ever-present. It's a reminder that change is possible, that the cycle of violence can be broken, and that that we can build a society where the streets of Compton and communities like it can be known for their strength, unity, and opportunities for all. In conclusion, let these stories serve as a testament to the power of transformation and a call to action for a brighter, safer, and more inclusive future. Together, we can change the narrative and work towards building a better tomorrow. 